Okay, but... How can you keep speaking, let alone hosting a show, and know so little? How can you know so little and keep on talking? What? The, the 9 on 11 what, hijackers what? weren't fundamentalists? The Twin what? Towers. Babble. It's not babble at all. What? Babble. You are trying to... I don't know where on earth you're coming from on this. No serious person can even keep on saying the nonsense you're coming out with. Well, if the you read the, the letters, read the letters... The Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be checking out a video where Douglas Murray engaged uh, in a discussion with a politician on whether or not uh, the bouquet or the niqab should be banned in Britain. Let's start with the video. Go. You are about to see Douglas Murray completely dismantle a French journalist. The conversation was around whether or not the bouquet should be banned in Britain. The journalist accuses Douglas Murray of Islamophobia, but he was never ready for Douglas Murray's response. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Douglas, go ahead. It is, look, it is true that, um, uh, the, 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 from the outset here, you, you, you've put a sort of false dichotomy. Uh, one of the things you asked is, uh, who are we to say that this is extreme or fundamentalist? I, any rational observer, I think, could notice this, that a belief system which believes that women have to be covered throughout their adult years in a black sack and distrusts the male half of the population. After all, the, uh, the reasoning goes that those of us who are men c could not help ourselves seeing even a bit well, of you know, female you know, flesh. Douglas, we Douglas, we wouldn't want how to many, how finished, many, and we couldn't ru jump on it. I myself, how, how many, and how, I how many trust Islamic myself, my friends countries, rather better How many that. Islamic countries have you been to? Uh, quite a lot. I'm well, taking another one next week. And Why? I have too. I think a lot of people... Okay, uh, let's uh, play basketball uh, No, no, no. What, what I'm saying is a lot of I people of Islam, Muslims, find it offensive that women walk around nude on the beach. They find that extremely yeah, but, offensive, but, but, okay? But, but, so, I mean, who's to say what's offensive beach. and what's extreme, okay? That, well, I'll explain the lens to you. you I'll explain to you. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. I'll explain to you. Well, we could which have is that all societies have... And, 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 wait, please... Douglas, and I promise. All okay. societies have all societies have certain norms, values, and so on. Uh, in uh, Western European countries, we believe that women are equal citizens, and we believe that men can be trusted not to rape women if they see a bit of their flesh. Uh, we have a different dress code on this. It is entirely acceptable uh, uh, for societies to decide uh, what goes on within them and that there are boundaries beyond which you cannot go. My society, as I, I stressed earlier, already has made that decision. I cannot go into certain public buildings and places or indeed spend my whole life with a crash helmet on my head, nor could I do so with a balaclava. My society also decides, rightly or wrongly, depending on your view, that I can't walk around naked all the time. And in fact, there's a naked rambler who's been trying to walk around Britain for years and has been arrested every time because of that. We already decide that it is in the public interest that people don't walk around naked. Yeah, well, it should be okay, possible Douglas, to decide is, so that it also is someone, wrong for people to walk around Is the around individual you're talking about walk around naked because of religious beliefs? Well, he's a he's See, a naturist, which is about and as oranges, it, which is, hang on, hang on. He's apples a naturist. And he's a naturist, and he believes in in his right to walk around naked. That is no more ridiculous for an outsider than walking around covered in a veil because you believe in the word of Muhammad. Douglas Murray presents a compelling argument in favor of such policies, drawing parallels between the established norms of dress within a society and how they are regulated. His comparison of the burqa to prohibitions like not wearing bike helmets in certain settings or the restriction on naturism in public is not just an apt analogy, but it emphasizes the common ground of social norms and security concerns that underpin many regulations in Western societies. This point is straightforward. Societies regulate attire based on context and perceived public good, including security. For instance, bike helmets or balaclavas are often prohibited in banks or government buildings due to the security risks posed by obscured identities. Similarly, the ban on public nudity is upheld by many societies, not merely on grounds of public decency, but also due to the broader social and cultural norms that dictate appropriate behavior. The argument against the burqa often hinges not only on the cultural clash it represents, but also on broader concerns about integration and security. Critics argue that full face coverings prevent the necessary visual identification and, by extension, hinder the social trust and cohesion that are vital in public spaces. Notably, in France, where the burqa ban is most stringent, the law was introduced as an act of ensuring the dignity of the person and equality between sexes, which are foundational values in French society. 
The opposition might argue, as the French journalist did, that comparing the burqa to naturism is inappropriate because the burqa is worn for religious reasons. However, Murray's counter is robust, underscoring that the principle of balancing individual rights with societal norms and security is a long-standing practice, irrespective of the motivations behind specific attire choices. Support for the ban isn't isolated. For example, a YouGov poll showed considerable support across Europe for restricting the wearing of burqas in public, reflecting widespread concerns about security and cultural integration. Moreover, figures like Ayai and Hirsi Ali have supported such bans as measures to promote the integration and emancipation of Muslim women, arguing that these garments symbolize the oppression inherent within certain interpretations of Islam. We have an extremist yes. problem. Yeah, in the 9 11, the people problem. that perpetrated 9 11 were not even fundamentalists at all, okay? At all. You guys oh, make this uh, connection uh, all no, of the no, time. No, not. They were they not. Were, okay. They were more, uh, they were are more are secular than most. Oh, come on. Then, then how, you guys don't how, even how know the history you, of the people of the hijackers. Of the majority of the hijackers. How can you keep speaking, let alone hosting a show, and know so little? How can you know so little and keep on talking? What? The, the 9 on 11 what, hijackers what? weren't fundamentalists? Not in the way that you're talking about the burqa. No How? way. Well, I have look even, at the, have the, you, look have where you they well came from. Well, 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 you are trying to... I don't know where on earth you're coming from on this. No serious person can even keep on saying the nonsense you're coming out with. Well, if the you read the, the letters, read the letters the they left, most Muslims wouldn't do that. Would, would read the letters that they wrote, oh, they wrote right, to their okay. girlfriends. They didn't invoke religious law. I mean, learn something about Islam before you say somebody's talking babble, yeah, like, okay? It That's strikes, ridiculous. It strikes, me, it, strikes Absolutely me, ridiculous. it strikes me that it strikes me that you're speaking from a position of unique ignorance. I don't know, first of all, why it is you keep on using this term Islamophobia to attack all people who are criticizing fundamentalism. It's a quite cheap way to try to avoid an argument. And then you try to claim that people who fly planes into Twin Towers and the Pentagon and so on, and blow up people in my city for the crime of going on the subway are not fundamentalists. Just They're read not, the maybe tracks not really, of their leaders. Maybe Just fundamentalists read. in the fact that they wanted to create terror, but it not necessarily out of religion, if you know the history of each one of those attackers. They're not, that's not the true at all. I, I, that is they very they right, 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 let's go to Paris, because we're running out of time. Let's go to Paris, because we're running out of time. Go and read any of the major texts on this, and you'll learn. I learned, I know probably more than you'll ever forget. Go ahead. Well, it's a good, I wish you'd try to show oh, it. Okay, and I wish you'd Anne try Elizabeth, to show it. go ahead. I completely agree with Douglas Murray on this one. To contextualize Douglas Murray's stance, it's important to recognize that the attackers were members of Al Qaeda, an Islamist extremist group that has openly articulated its agenda in religious terms. Al Qaeda's ideological framework combines political grievances with an extreme interpretation of Sunni Islam which explicitly calls for jihad against what they perceive as the West's aggression towards Muslim lands. Osama bin Laden, the group's leader, explicitly referenced religious texts to justify the attacks and frame them as a defense of Islam. The notion that these attacks were not rooted in Islamic fundamentalism ignores substantial evidence, including the attacker's own statements and the ideological teachings of al-Qaeda that draw heavily upon extremist interpretations of Islamic doctrine. For example, the attackers' martyrdom videos and the letters they left behind speak of their desire to defend Islam and attain martyrdom, explicitly mentioning religious motivations alongside their political grievances. Thank you for watching this video. Please share your thoughts in the comments. Wow, what an interesting and a very detailed debate from Douglas Murray. Uh, you know, Recently, there have been uh, a lot of talks about uh, banning the burqa or banning the niqab uh, in Britain. And Douglas Murray always uh, justify his argument with facts that in order for you to, uh, in order for you to be able to integrate uh, in a society, that there's the need for you, uh, for people to, to see your face. You don't have to cover yourself uh, because of your belief. You know, if you ask some Muslims why they cover themselves up, and you see most of them will say they are trying to uh, 
that are trying to uh, stop uh, men from lusting after them. And some of them will also say it is their own personal is their own personal uh, is their own personal decision that they will get uh, a reward in heaven just by doing so. And some of them will also uh, say uh, is their own personal relationship uh, with God that that's why they they cover themselves. And some of them will say it's mandatory by it's mandatory by the Quran that they should cover themselves up. But I think the last time I watch I watch a video uh, from uh, a Britain imam stated a fact that the buka or the niqab is nowhere to be found in the Quran. That he don't know the reason why uh, most Muslim women still insist on wearing the niqab and the buka. That the word buka or the word niqab is nowhere to be found in the Quran. And he tried to, uh, the lady he was engaging in, in the debate, uh, he tried to uh, bring out a Quran and he asked the lady, can the lady uh, state any any text in the Quran that talk about the buka or that mentioned the niqab? And the lady wasn't able to uh, state any verse in the Quran that the word buka or the word niqab is actually stated. And from what Douglas Murray is saying that in order for you to be able to integrate in a society, people have to see your face. Even for security reasons, if you are entering into some public places like uh, the bank, like the courtroom, like the schools, people need to see your face for security reasons so they know the person that is coming in. And I even believe, uh, in order for people, in order for a com in order for communication or for dialogue to go effectively, there is a need for the person you are communicating with to see your face. Because sometimes your facial expression can tell someone if you are in the mood for uh, some type of discussion. You know, if you are angry or if you are not happy or if you are happy. The person can be able to know uh, the best time to communicate uh, to you about some certain topic. Even in schools, even in schools, when the teachers are teaching, I believe there's a need for the teachers to be able to uh, see the, the, the face of the students they are teaching. Because sometimes students are not confident enough to ask questions or to speak to the teacher if they are not understanding or if they are not following what the teacher is teaching. But when the teacher look at the facial expression of the student, the teacher can tell if the student are following up with what she is teaching. So she will know if she's going to elaborate more on the topic she's teaching. But if the face of the student is totally covered, there's no way the teacher will be able to tell if the student are actually getting what she's teaching and you can tell in this uh debate in this debate the muslim uh in this debate the politician uh stated a stated a fact that in islam countries they don't allow uh the wearing of bikini they don't allow the wearing of uh some dresses in the beach the dresses that you know that uh he, he open uh your skin up they don't allow such dresses and Douglas Murray totally agreed with that fact that they don't agree with such dresses because each country has their own identity. As we all know, a country's identity is embodied in the country's culture, is embodied in the country's tradition, is embodied in the country's values. And Britain as a country has its own identity, which is embodied uh, in Britain culture, embodied in Britain tradition, embodied in Britain values. And Britain is majority of Christian. It's known as a, a Christian country, which means they have their own identity. And Britain identity uh, uh, is against uh, full covering because you have to see the face of the person you are, you are communicating with in order for the communication to to go effectively. That's what uh, Douglas Murray is trying to, that's the point Douglas Murray is trying to prove in this video. And I, for one, I totally 
uh, I totally relate uh, with Douglas Murray point and fact because I believe if you are going to leave your country and come to another person's country, you have to be able to accept the culture. You have to be able to accept the tradition. You have to be able to accept the values of the country you want to, uh, you want, you are relocating to or the country you want to reside to. You have to be able to accept their culture, their tradition, and their values because you know their tradition is rooted, uh, you know their, their identity is rooted in their culture, is rooted in their tradition, is rooted in their values. So, you don't have to come to a country with your own imported culture, with your own imported behavior, imported values, in order for you to be able to integrate uh, if effectively in a, a country. You have to accept their culture, their values, their tradition. You don't have to come to a country with your own imported uh, be, uh, culture and tradition and try to impose it on the people. And when you feel the people are not uh, buying it, then you say the people are becoming uh, Islamophobic or you call it an hate speech. You don't have to do that. You residing in a country, you have to abide by the country, culture, tradition, and values. If you know you cannot abide by the country's tradition, you cannot abide by the country values, you cannot abide by the country uh, culture, then it's better you go live in your own country. Go live in your own Islam country, Muslim country, whereby when you put on your niqab, when you put on uh, your full face covering, no one is going to question your action because it's uh, a culture and a value system, a norm that is accepted in that country. If you are living in a Muslim country, no one will question your action because uh, uh, in Muslim culture, that is accepted. So I believe there's a need for you to be able to uh, adjust yourself to accommodate uh, the tra tradition, the culture, and the value system of the country that is accommodating you. That's the fact Douglas Murray is trying to prove uh, in this video. I've really learned a lot just by listening to uh, Douglas Murray. And I believe you also do. Keep the comments coming. Do you think uh, the NACAP, do you think the NACAP or the Buka should be allowed in Britain? Do you think it should be allowed in Britain? And if you are a Muslim, kindly state uh, a text or a verse in the Quran that the word Nikap or Buka is mentioned. Keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.